The Entrepreneur's Library, episode 175. Welcome to the Entrepreneur's Library, the only book-centric podcast that reviews all the top-selling business books and shares authors' perspective firsthand. This is your resource to finding the next great book that will enable you to grow personally and professionally. Welcome your host, Wade Danielson. Welcome back to the EL. Today we have Charlie Got It, author of The Predictable Profits Playbook. The Entrepreneur's Guide to Dominating Any Market and Staying on Top. And uh, I try not to chime in too much here at the beginning, but th- this is another another favorite interview that I've done. Charlie is a, is a phenomenal person, and he's written a really, really excellent book. And uh, we have a couple extra copies that we can't wait to get out to, uh, to, to a lot of you. So if, you, uh, if you'd like an opportunity to win, uh, go visit the elpodcast.com and become a VIP. So without further ado, let's bring on Charlie. Welcome, Charlie, and thank you for joining us on the Entrepreneur's Library. Pleasure to be here, Wade. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Before we take a deep dive into your book, The Predictable Profits Playbook, will you take just a moment to introduce yourself? Tell us just a little bit about you personally. Sure. Uh, My name is Charles Gaudet. I've been an entrepreneur since the age of four, created my first multi-million dollar business at the age of 24. Um, entrepreneurship has more or less been in my blood, been an entrepreneur all my life. Uh, t- today, I own a company where I help small business owners create predictable and ever-increasing profits inside of their business. Um, and we've, uh, we've rocked it with some of these entrepreneurs. Uh, some of my favorite success stories are taking companies, or I've taken a company who is in there. Um, low to mid six figures, and we created $1.17 million in sales in only just five days, which was uh, more than many, many, many months all combined. Uh, We also increased uh, product sales over 100% for another client um, with uh, with just two emails and uh, have helped many entrepreneurs increase their profits anywhere from 30 to 100% less than a year just using a number of the techniques that you're about to hear as part of this podcast. So Charlie, first off, thank you for sharing that. And at the end, I, you know, I always, I always preface when we have authors on that, uh, uh, when I ask you for more information on yourself, I'd love for you to mention how, I mean, obviously what you provide as a service is what, uh, a lot of our listeners might be able to utilize themselves. So I'd love for you to take a deeper, I tell them it's kind of the opposite of a, of a plug free zone. It's a plug away zone. So when we get to that point, I'd love for you to uh, talk a little bit more about what you offer to those small business owners, if you'll do that. Sure. Absolutely. Excellent. So for now, let's jump right into your book, the predictable profits playbook, which I'm going to say about four more times, probably throughout this. And if I nail it all, I'm going to be, I'm going to be excited. Um, but which uh, was made available not that long ago, actually uh, not even a year yet, uh, April of 2014. And Charlie, we're going to move quickly, but really our whole goal here today is to cover the top questions that our listener slash future reader would like to get answered before they, you know, purchase and read the book. Sure. And the first one is, what was the inspiration behind writing the Predictable Profits Playbook? Well, Wade, uh, I read your bio. I saw that you're a very successful entrepreneur yourself. Um, And like a lot of entrepreneurs, um, we're told that the secret to success is to work hard. And I took that very literally where I would set my alarm clock for 3.30 in the morning so that I wouldn't, quote-unquote, oversleep. And I'd work every waking hour of every day, seven days a week. Then it got to a point where the stress, uh, the constant stress, I mean, at one point I was in well over a million dollars in debt, paying double-digit interest rates, and the stress was causing severe chest pain, Um, and I found myself in the emergency room with a pain shooting up in the back of my head. Uh, I thought it was a brain aneurysm, uh, but then the doctor uh, sat me down and uh, said, Hey, Charlie, uh, I don't know how to tell you this, uh, but the issue is stress, and the stress is literally starting to kill you. Uh, So at that point, I realized that something had to change. Um, the, The tough thing about it is I'm looking around at all these people who are working less hours than I am, and for some reason are finding their ways to achieving a lot more success than I was achieving at the time. So I knew that there was some sort of secret, some sort of formula uh, that they knew or they were using uh, that I didn't. So um, at that point, I invested heavily. Uh, To date, it's been well over $500,000 traveling the world, studying billionaires, centimillionaires, uh, authors, celebrities, 
companies, uh, entrepreneurs, you name it, trying to figure out what were some of the common denominators that helped them succeed where others failed. And uh, collectively, um, I, uh, I kept a pretty extensive notebook, and collectively we put that all together, uh, connected the dots, and we wrote that into the book in the Predictable Profits Playbook. Perfect. So you've already done this a little bit, or at least I, you know, I've heard some differentiators already, but this next question is really to separate your book from the other, you know, since April, 2014, there's probably been a thousand plus books that have come out that are geared towards entrepreneurs. So I'd like to take a, a little bit of time and differentiate yours from the rest. So what makes your book different from others regarding the same or similar topic? Well, you know, there are a lot of fantastic books out there and I'm a sponge for reading high quality information. And there are many different ways in which you can grow a business, but the one thing that's missing is putting it all together into a formula that actually works. And sure, you can pick up a book on social media, you can pick up a book on direct response marketing, you can pick up a book on becoming uh, an influential leader in your space or whatever it might be. Um, what we've done is essentially cut through a lot of the BS and put together what it what works and uh, shed the light a bit on what doesn't work. And, and that's where you're going to find the Predictable Profits play, Playbook. I mean, everything inside the book, we've got strategies, we've got ideas, we've interviewed authors from all around the world, uh, entrepreneurs, rather, from all around the world. And um, the book is uh, chock full with actionable advice, not just information, but actionable advice. Mm. And, and this leads right into my next question, which will be perfect because – it's actionable advice. And so how did you, or how do you suggest the reader engage with your book? Is this one that they can jump in and out grabbing that, that usable advice as needed, or did you really design it to be read from front to back? Well, I did design it to, to be read from front to back. But the one thing that, um, there, there's a metaphor. Oh, one of my mentors, his name is Dan Sullivan. He's, uh, operates a business called the strategic coach. Uh, specific for entrepreneurs. And one of the uh, metaphors, which I've stolen from him because I thought it was so brilliant, was the idea of how water boils. And it starts with one small bubble, then several other small bubbles that come together to form a larger bubble. And progressively, that starts to bring the water to the boiling point. And what you're going to find in the Predictable Profits Playbook is a lot of different strategies and a lot of different ideas. And the point is not to look at it and say, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to deploy every single strategy that you have in this book, but rather understand that water boils with one little bubble at a time. So you take one of these ideas, implement it masterfully, and then move to the next little bubble and the next little bubble. And collectively, that forms the bigger bubbles. And then you get to that point where your company is creating those predictable and ever-increasing profits. Perfect. So... Charlie, now that we know a little bit of the background, the purpose behind the book, let's take a deep dive into the content itself. So we take the next five to eight minutes and really lay out uh, for the, the, the listener, but the future reader, what they can expect to get out of your book? Absolutely. Uh, well, you know, I think what, um, what we'll do is uh, we'll start right from the beginning. And uh, there's, there's three different components, ultimately, um, at the 30,000-foot view that separates the companies that are achieving wild success in any economy and the companies that are still struggling. And at the 30,000 foot view, it's broken down into three categories. It's positioning, it's product, and it's promotion. And the book goes deep into each one of those. In positioning, it's really about what can you do to establish yourself as the obvious choice among your competitors. Now, this is really important because Today, we're facing a whole new economy than we were facing many years ago. And there's new consumers that exist today than just existed, say, 10 years ago. A lot of times what you find are small business owners are still playing from an old playbook, but this is a new playbook. And the reason why that is is because we have educated and informed consumers today. That's something we didn't have years ago. With the Internet, your consumer it gets to a point where they know more about you and more about your comp competitors, more about their alternatives, more about um, your products, then oftentimes the entrepreneur actually knows themselves. So with an informed consumer, that puts the balance of power has shifted for the first time really 
in, uh, in our lives, Wade, where all the power is in the consumer's hands. It's not in the company's hands. See, in the past, the company could produce information, and we were just forced to believe it. Now, the consumer has all this information at their fingertips with Google, Bing, Yahoo, and whatnot, that they're on the Internet and they're doing their research. So the first part of the book really is focusing on what can you do to establish yourself as that obvious choice in your company. Uh, there are a number of strategies in there. You know, you hear the phrase that the riches are in the, the riches are in the niches. And um, inside the book, we go over why uh, that's true, but why that's also uh, a dangerous path because uh, that's only really the half truth. So we cover the entire component of what it takes to establish uh, a niche powerfully and successfully the way leaders in the company have, have done so, leaders like Apple and uh, Zappos and Amazon. Um, then we talk about how to identify a unique advantage point. And unique advantage points are very similar to that of, say, a unique selling proposition with one critical, small, but critical difference. A unique selling proposition really talks about uh, what makes you unique. A unique advantage point is different in that it's what makes you unique and creates an advantage for the ultimate consumer. And it, so it doesn't really matter if you're different. It's whether or not you are offering a unique advantage to the consumer. Um, and then we go on with a multiple of other uh, different strategies inside there. But uh, moving on, the other thing that we cover, as I mentioned, was products. That's the second component. And with product, it's about escaping the commodity trap. And price... A lot of, and, and this happens a lot of times with, uh, with entrepreneurs, I'd say about uh, 95% of all the different clients that I work with get caught into this trap where they think that the reason why somebody isn't buying is because their price is too high. So the first thing they do is they go on and, and discount their prices. We have a different approach and we ask ourselves the question, what do we need to do to become the highest price competitor in our market and still have customers lining up to do business with us. And inside this section in the book, we talk about how to remove price as part of the equation and position yourself as one of the highest price competitors and still having people happy to do business with you. So we cover that as well as how to raise your prices and so forth. And then the last component of the book is really about promotion. The number one issue with entrepreneurs is that they rely very heavily on one or two. And if they're a little bit more strategic than the average bear, three ways of generating income for their company. They may use pay-per-click advertising. They may use yellow pages. They may just have salespeople or, or heavily rely on referral systems. Um, but what we call this is the money wheel. If you only have one or two spokes to your money wheel and one of them breaks, ultimately that ends up creating a pretty bumpy ride. So we're looking at creating a multitude of systems, a multitude of profit centers, and then there's more spokes to the wheel. So as we've seen throughout history, policies change, technology changes, um, you know, and in essence, marketing is continuously changing. The more spokes you have to the money wheel, the more predictable your profits. For example, a lot of people relied on Google pay-per-click advertising. Um, and then the algorithms changed, and sure enough, millions of people got their accounts suspended. A lot of people relied on search engine optimization. And that's great until the algorithm changes. And next thing you know, you find yourself on page 100 of the Google box. Um, yellow pages, that was the staple for God knows how long, and now yellow pages has changed. So people are being forced to reinvent themselves. Uh, this is the section where you'll learn different strategies of creating those multiple spokes to the wheel so that your company survives and thrives in, in, in any economic situation. Um, we also, in, in, there's another component and another issue that a lot of small business owners have is they treat all their customers and prospects the same way. Whether they're a customer or prospect, they get the same email or they get the same direct mail message. There's no differ differentiation. But really what we found is that there are three different components to uh, a consumer. 
uh, we actually relate it to relationships, a dating component, an engagement component, and a marriage component. The dating component is when the consumer first becomes acquainted with your company. And what you do to attract more leads in the company, how to nurture the leads, they, you establish more trust with them, and they start buying from you. Then the engagement side is you know, really how to get them to buy more, spend more money with you, get them excited, create more referrals, and, and create more loyalty. And then marriage, and it's funny with this marriage thing, if you think of marriage in a real life situation, the reason why most marriages break up is because of communication issues. Well, in this book, we talk about strategies in that so that um, when a consumer does business with you for a while, you reduce your attrition rate. So you lose the customers going out the back door by finding more ways to add more value, create more profit and uh, have longer, longer success. So um, that's the nuts and bolts of what you're going to find in the Predictable Profits Playbook. Perfect. And now we're going to ask you to take it even a step further to break it down for someone. Uh, really what we're asking here is that there's only one concept, principle, or action item that the reader can take out of the entire book and everything you just discussed with us. What would you want that to be? In today's day and age, which is unique to any other period throughout history, um, the small with technology and whatnot, the small business owner can compete with a big business playbook for, with a small business budget. Mm. Did I say that right? Does that make sense? Yes. No, it absolutely does. <laughs> but basically, small <laughs> business ca can can uh, compete with big business with the proper with the proper setup. There are such fantastic technologies available. I mean, look at this. You you know, if you've got a technology company. You can still compete with the likes of Apple with pay-per-click advertising. You know, there are simple CRM programs like Infusionsoft that allow you to do such amazing systems and automation techniques that years ago would cost tens of thousands of dollars per month to implement. Now, for a couple hundred bucks, you can create an automated systematic cash turbine it's um, it's pretty fantastic. So that's uh, that's what's get, that's what that gets me pretty excited. Obviously, no, that that that's fantastic. We actually use it's funny that you bring up Infusionsoft. We use Infusionsoft, and there are so many little uh, I say little programs, but but software like that that are just game changers uh, for how you know we we were doing things so slow and repetitive and. And the, the the management that was needed until some of these tools came out uh, is just complete game changers. But Charlie, do you have a this is kind of an odd question? Uh, but do you have a favorite quote from your book? Something that you wrote uh, that you thought was kind of powerful? And will you also take a minute to explain what it means to you? <laughs> sure. Uh, favorite quote of the book? You know, uh, I knew you were going to ask me this, and. You know, I don't know that there's really a favorite quote for the book, but rather a, uh, a principle okay. that, um, that I'd like to emphasize, and that's the idea of the new consumer. And, uh, you know, there, there is a new consumer today, as we, as we mentioned earlier, and in order to compete in today's day and age, knowing that your consumer has all the power, you've got to be more strategic than anybody else out there. There's this overall idea that entrepreneurs can, can sit down and work this four-hour work week. Now, I love Tim Ferriss, and he's, he's a very brilliant person and has added a lot of value back into my life. But the one thing entrepreneurs have to understand is that there are, this world is much smaller than it was in the past with the Internet and technology and resources and whatnot. There are people from all around the world that are sitting there around their boardroom tables strategizing for ways to take more market share away from you. Mm. And so your, your, the idea of an entrepreneur is to find out ways in which you can create systems and strategies and ideas to become more robust. And uh, in doing so, you can leverage some of the technologies that we talked about before so that you create these systems in these strategies and you can automate them and then work to the next one and automate them and work on the next one and automate them and just keep building this robust organization, whether you're a business of one or you're a business of 25. So that's my long winded quote. 
No, that's huge. <laughs> and, and for people that want to reflect on that more, we'll, we'll put that in the show notes at the elpodcast.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have, uh, Charlie, because of our audience, uh, about 20% more than the average audience, uh, I guess our audience listens mobile, meaning that they are on the go, uh, which doesn't surprise me, them being entrepreneurs and all. So uh, a lot of times uh, they'll be able to reflect on a lot more of the information or go back and read up on a lot of things you've discussed today at the show notes. But our last question, Charlie, obviously as a book centric podcast, we have to ask for a recommendation. And that's if there's only one book you could recommend best based on the way that it's impacted your life, maybe created a a paradigm shift or a lifestyle shift. uh, What book would you suggest? Richard Branson's losing my virginity. Hmm. It's uh, Richard Branson's autobiography. And as proof of the way that it's impacted my life, I actually named my son Branson after Richard Branson after reading that book. Oh, wow. You know, that's, that's one book. It's a big name book and I have yet to read it. So now that, that that's probably going to be the, the, uh, the push I needed to actually pick that one up. So that's fantastic. Thank you for that recommendation. And Charlie, before we depart, can you recommend the best way for our listeners to not only get more information on you, but also get more information on the predictable profits playbook and and i i slowed down there one to pronounce that right but also uh to remind you that that if there's uh is there's a plug that that applies to our audience member please uh please mention it sure no worries well the best way to get a hold of me uh you can you can read more about me at my website at predictableprofits.com um, the book itself, you can find at the predictable profits playbook.com. And of course I could be followed on Twitter at Charles Godet. I offer a lot of content, a lot of articles at, uh, the predictable profit at predictable uh, on my blog. I'm always there to, to add as much value as possible and to help, uh, small business owners grow their business rapidly, safely, and more predictably. Uh, so, so find me at, uh, predict- predictableprofits.com. Perfect. Well, Charlie, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your book with us. All right, well, thank you. Wait, it's been a real pleasure being here. Thanks again for listening in today. If you'd like more information on Charlie or his book, the predictable profits playbook, check out the show notes at the el podcast.com. Looking for your next book idea? Head over to the el podcast.com where Wade shares his amazing resource, the top 10 business books recommended by over 500 entrepreneurs with you for free. That's the el podcast.com. Till the next time, keep it on the el.